Hello again, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about the Sagittarius full moon. That's going to be happening December 12th, 2019 at 12, 12 a.m. For those of you guys that are already part of my Bahati Vibe Tribe, hashtag Bahati Vibe Tribe Vibes, I just wanted to give you guys a quick shout out and hug and love and thank you so much for being so close to me and a part of my family. It really means a lot. And for those of you guys that are not not new or or not that you're not new but if you've never heard of the Bahati Vibe Tribe and you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel let me go ahead and exp explain to you really quickly my method and how I pull my charts and how I do my readings so I am a, a, an astrologer an intuitive and when I look at the astrology chart which is over here on my right on my iPad and when I look at the cards the signs the symbols trigger certain um, feelings emotions and in intuitive messages pictures and information along with my extensive study lifelong study of astrology and tarot so that's what you can experience with within these types of readings okay so that being said let me go ahead and get started and by the way let me say before i get started that this reading actually feels very special not just for you but also for me because this morning i woke up and i just felt so called to go to the divine like that was the first thing i wanted as soon as I woke up, outside of my meditation, outside of my prayer, I still felt this agitation to go to my altar, to spend more quality time with spirit, with the higher source, and I do not regret it. The amount of messages that came through for me and the amount of synchronicity that came through after that and how everything has kind of fallen together after that moment has actually been so mind-blowing that there were multiple times just this morning and it's literally 1.47 p.m. as I'm looking at the clock. It is not even three o'clock and I just have been so overwhelmed with gratitude. There's multiple times where I actually felt like I was going to cry because I'm like, wow, wow, that message is insane. Like I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know that that was gonna come through and that has blessed my life. Now, these are things that I would like to give some of the credit, well, all of the credit to the divine, to the higher self within me um, also, but I also have to look at Jupiter's move into the sign of Capricorn. And for the, those of you guys that don't know how that move, how that transit is going to impact you, I have a full video about that and I will link it down below. But for right now, we're gonna be talking about the full moon in, Sagitt the full moon in Sagittarius, um, what, what you can expect, how you should set your intention and what I see for you, for me, for the collective. Now, um, I did eat a piece of chocolate and I'm still, I, mean, I don't know, I'm digesting it or whatever, but um, it's still in my mouth and I'm like enjoying it still. So if you guys hear me smacking a little more than usual, that is why. But um, that being said, let's go ahead and move forward. So the first thing that is standing out to me, and I have my notes here, a lot of notes. Oh, and I just smacked myself in the face with it for the second time this week But I have a lot of notes here because I don't want to miss anything The first thing is the obvious is the fact that the Sun is falling in the sign of Sagittarius and the moon is falling in the sign of Gemini That's what's making the full moon because the Sun and the moon are opposite. They are opposed now again if you have not seen my video on the energy of Jupiter, especially as it's moving into the sign of Capricorn, you definitely want to watch it after this. But what I'm seeing a lot is a connection to um, the higher self, the higher self within you, something that is not exclusively just information and things that you see in your environment that's right in front of your face. It's something that is felt internally. The next thing that I want to point out to you is, and I've been saying this a lot, is that the collective is trying to find the place where they emotionally feel and know innately that they belong. This is because the North Node, that is where we are destined to go, where we're striving to go as a collective, and the North Node it falls um, in the sign of Cancer, but you want to see what that rules within your chart, but as a whole, all of us individually and as a community on this planet we're looking to find that sense of belonging belongingness this is where i belong it's not just a home environment or with your family or with your roots it's where you are going to root yourself in what no matter where you came from but it's all about where you're going it's about finding people your tribe relationships um places 
uh, organizations, businesses, your purpose, all of those things, they need to be emotionally fulfilling. They need to resonate as truth. And if it doesn't, you will feel such a spur, so much irritation to find it regardless of what your um, responsibilities are, what your commitments are. The universe simply will not allow um, us to be complacent. It will not allow us to root ourselves in a spot that is not there for us to thrive. In fact, if you find yourself in an environment where a lot of things are irritating you and you know it seems like everything is working against you, it's time for you to learn the lesson of that and then when it's when you're ready, when you know, it's time to move on. And this is something that you're gonna feel within your emotions because that's what happens with the North Node following the sign of Cancer and with the full moon, with um, Jupiter moving into the sign of Capricorn, with Cap uh, Saturn, Venus in the sign of Capricorn, Mercury in Sagittarius, Mars in Scorpio, and I'm gonna explain all of why that's significant. All right, so that's the other thing too, is that when I do a, a chart reading, it's not just me focusing on the energy of one position, one placement within the planets. In this case, the sun falling in the sign of Sagittarius and the moon falling in the sign of Gemini. That is what creates the full moon, but it's all of the energy around us that we that we have to work with, that we have to lear learn to work with in order to set our intention. So that being said, um, the next thing that I that stood out to me that I wrote down is actually Mercury uh, is also seeing the sign of Sagittarius, but I want to talk about Mars. I want to talk about Mars because when we have the sun moving through the sign of Sagittarius in this full moon, heightening our emotions, heightening our feelings, Cancer, um, and the reason why I'm talking about Cancer is because the North Node falls in the sign of Cancer. Cancer connects us to our emotions, but it's a cardinal sign. So if our emotions are off and our intuition is telling us that something is off, it is going to go into overdrive in order to rectify it, in order to make it right. These are the things that you can see that are facts. This is something that's right in your face. This is something that comes in as information, a message, an email, or you're looking at you know details of it. You're, you're looking at, you're doing research on it. Why? Because the moon is following in the sign of Gemini, bringing that information and you know highlighting it and putting it into your face. The sun um, moving through the sign of Sagittarius is causing the collective to expand their per perspective, to look at everything that you can see everything that you can research and find out if it resonates as truth. How does it make you feel? Do you belong here? And then Mars ruling that inspired action, that drive, because Mars is our action. It's what you know pulls us out of bed and what makes us a fighter spirit or a warrior spirit or kind of fall back and be a little bit more um, passive. But Mars moving through the sign of Scorpio right now is saying, listen, this feeling that you have is triggering these feelings that you're feeling are intense, they're real, and they're gonna trigger me to make you, you know, go into to, uh, fighter, I don't wanna say fight or flight, but fighter mode, warrior mode. Not in the sense that you're fighting out and lashing out at things, but be, um, the way that I wanna describe it is that you are not going to roll over and accept something that you know within your spirit is not where you should be and not what you want for yourself. This feeling is going to be so intense, it's gonna be unavoidable. It's something that you can't pretend that it's something that it's not. It's gonna come from a shadow space, a darker space. That's something that as a society, we sometimes are uncomfortable talking about is a shadow side, the darker sides of ourselves. But in reality, you're learning how to work your power. You're learning how to own your power. You're learning how you can um, impact, AKA manipulate your environment in order to get what you want, not in a way that is ill or has bad intention, but has good intention. So there's a lot of energy right now that is causing your, your energy and your vibes and your perspective to shift and to expand by looking at what's in front of you, feeling it out, how does this make me feel, and knowing what I feel, knowing how this makes me feel, this is what I'm gonna do, inspired action, right? So then I'm looking at the chart, Mars, action, drive, ambition, sitting in the sign of Scorpio, starts to trine off with Neptune. Neptune falls in the sign of Pisces. This has all of us as a collective being like, wait a minute, there's something more out there for me. I want to. I don't want to just have a regular routine existence. I want to take my existence, my 
my life and I want to make it meaningful and I know that there is a purpose. These relationships that are in my life, they have to have purpose. They have to have meaning. Definitely with relationships, um, now that I'm saying that, because as I'm looking at the chart with, along the full moon, for the full moon, Venus ruling love, relationships, beauty, aesthetic, money, the things that is that we value sits directly conjunct meaning right on top of saturn the planet of commitment and dedication and bonds and also pluto the planet of transformation and intensity and also soulmate and soul soul work and then neptune also rules that spiritual partner that twin flame that that um polar the polar opposite but the match to your vibration you know the 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 spiritual match to you this is not the superficial match to you. This is not, you know, for a lot of us, what we know about ourselves. It's what the divine sees for us, where we are called to go. That's why some of the best relationships in our lives, the most profoundly changing ones, are the ones that call us to become the greater version of ourselves. It's not just how we know ourselves, but we are constantly, we're gonna be evolving in that relationship, constantly expanding ourselves. So for those of you guys that are setting um, intention for relationships and connecting with that global, like where is my soul partner? Where is, you know, that my counterpart? You don't want to limit yourself to just your neighborhood, just your community. You want to allow the universe to, to connect with all of the keys, all of the resources, all of the potential to bring you your soul's counterpart that is, you know, going to help you to, you know, pull yourself up and you them, right? It's a beautiful thing that is that we're seeing. But outside of relationships, it's about your soul purpose. It's about um, living out your soul, uh, a big chunk of your soul's purpose. Sometimes that's, you know, significant things that are seemingly more significant because of the weight of the magnitude of the responsibility that you carry. For example, let's say it's your job, your career, or you as a mother, or you as a father, a parent, um, or a guardian. Or maybe it's something that you need to take care of right now and that's your purpose. So I have a whole controversial, not really controversial, but um, moment, that inspired moment from the divine that was talking to me about you know, purpose, our life purpose and what that looks like. And I'm more than happy to talk to you guys about that in another video, but for right now, we're gonna stick to the full moon. Just let me know down in the comments if you want me to talk about life purpose, soul purpose, and those types of things. But back to the chart so yeah what i'm seeing is like you you really don't want and you're really feeling a call to a greater existence some people are lagging behind a little bit and i think that that's because of different neighborhoods different communities are not comfortable with pe people striking out and doing things differently outside of the norm um, and if you don't have a support system outside of your community it can be really hard for you to branch out but the astrology charts the cosmos the universe doesn't make room for excuses it says listen i understand that you are here and you were born in this region for a reason you were born in this community you were born into this family for a reason but at some point the chart is going to open a door is going to open and we're going to ask you to walk out and if you don't the risk of you staying there is greater than your the risk that it takes in order for you to branch out now that's a message that a lot of you guys need to hear outside of the fact you know that even if you're not in a community that doesn't support you you just might be in a spot in your life where it's not supporting you let's say it's your relationship let's say it's an aspect of yourself it's not that you are you are abandoning yourself or abandoning that relationship it's just that you or the relationship or the career or your work is evolving and the the risk is so high and it's terrifying and it's scary but you've got to take the time you have to do the inspired action why do I keep saying inspired action well because Mars rules action Neptune brings that inspiration this is something that as a whole, we're feeling as a collective. It's very inspired, inspired, it's very intuitive. It's divinely channeled to us from the cosmos, from God, from the divine, call it what you will, from the highest source that is, you know, connects instantly to your highest self within you, right? So as soon as you feel that channeled message, as soon as you feel that inspiration, you are going, you are going to be called to make the first step. You have to do it. There's a lot of planets right now that are cardinal signs that are calling you to spur right into the action. There's a lot of planets that are saying, I need you to do it. This is unavoidable. This is unignorable. You can't keep making excuses. You can't keep saying, I'm not ready, right? You are ready. 
The other thing that I am seeing, and I wrote this down, is I, I wrote down the word sophisticated breakdown, a controlled demolition. And basically what I'm seeing as I'm looking at the charts and I'm putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together is I'm watching so many of you guys kind of, you know, hitting the dynamite, like the TNT, and you have put certain, um, I don't say bombs, but certain things into place in order to break down, in order to help break down certain things, certain established things, expectations, responsibilities, commitments, you know, things that you've been bonded to, um, things that you've been working on, you know, just really set in stone and that you thought or other people thought that or expected that there, it was going to be a part of your life forever. And you're like, no, no, it's not. 2018, 2019, this is you saying this out loud. 2018, 2019 has shown me, you know, the truth of who I am, the truth of what I'm meant to be. And I have been working cohesively with the universe in order to put these things into place so that when I, for this full moon, I'm gonna push the, the trigger down and I'm gonna watch all of this collapse. It's not chaotic collapse, it's not crazy collapse, it's a controlled demolition of you watching what you have, what has been built for you getting dismantled and get brought down and you're the one who's controlling it. And the thing is, is that, <laughs> got distracted, I got a text message. <laughs> But the thing is, is that as this comes down, the same, you know, you're gonna be able to see what you are going to clean out, what you are gonna have other people clean out, what you can clean out for yourself, what you're gonna keep, but with it, you're gonna have fresh ground. All of this is inspired action. This is the biggest, I don't wanna say the biggest leap of faith because so many, so many of you guys know that you're gonna be caught. So many of you guys know that this path is unfolding in front of you and it's just you who are taking the steps. And it's like, listen, if you only knew where I was coming from, you wouldn't even question why it's so easy for me and why I'm so strong to walk forward and why I'm not looking back. I know what it is that I'm doing even though it may seem like I don't know what it is that I'm doing. I know what it is that I'm doing, even if I don't know what it is that I'm doing, if that makes any sense, because it's inspired action, it's coming to you, it's channeling to you, through you, from the divine, and that's where your, your steps are so ordained, okay? So I'm seeing a lot of um, a connection to um, awakenings, being th things stirring you, uh, personal fulfillment, being inspired, um, despite the circumstances, despite the fact that for other people it may seem barren, for you, you're like, this this building, this tower has been sitting there for a minute, but there's money in there. Cha-ching! There's, you know, this, this spot seems to be unexplored, but I'm called to explore it. This aspect of myself seems like it's stagnant, but this is the one part of my life, this one part of myself, that I was called to revitalize, to, to breathe it, breathe life into it. That's what this full moon is all about. Now, let me talk to you about the cards that it is that I pulled that I found so incredible. So the first cards that I pulled, and you guys have to remember, for those of you guys that are part of the Bahati Vibe tribe and you're following me on Instagram, at Bahati Life, um, you guys know that when I look at the cards, it's more than me looking at the meanings of it. I look beyond the tarot card. I look behind, beyond the symbols. I've, that's just how I work. I have years, 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 lifelong experience of working with the tarot, and I'm teaching my students now in the Sacred Circle Tarot School how to do similar, the same things as me by doing one-on-one -on -one exercise or you know, hands-on exercises within our within our chats, our live chats. So when you look at these cards and you're like, Jess, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it probably doesn't to you maybe, but to me it makes all the sense, but I'm saying the message so that as a whole, it will apply to you and your life. So the first thing that's really sticking out to me and that stood out to me, let me go ahead and situate this, is the fact that the Ten of Swords and the King of Wands came up reversed. Now when these two cards came up reversed, I can't tell you what Spirit said. <laughs> with this message because it is not appropriate it is tbma um but what i will say here now between you and i is that this is about um the end of tossing things around it's the end of you being non-committal it's the end of you 
you know, kind of flitting from here to there to this to that and then saying, well, I'm not ready or I don't know what I want or, you know, I'm just here to have a good time. You know, it's just like, you know what? That is, spirit says very clearly that that is an excuse, that that is not the truth and that you've been hiding behind that, beneath that, around that for a minute and this is the one thing that they're like, listen, all of that is actually causing you to forget and to sacrifice who you are to your core and you're wasting time. And that is the most precious thing ever is time. It really truly is. There's a different, there's, a, there's for some people, it's good to explore your options. This is not just relationships. I know it sounds that like I'm talking about relationships, but it, it's things that you're like, you know, I'll get to it, I'll do it. I'm just not ready, I just don't have, yes you do. Yes you are. And spirit, I can't tell you the, the word that it, you know, the sentence that came through, the message, but I, I literally had to laugh, I had to like blush a little bit. But spirit it, for the full moon is saying, listen, no more excuses, no more, no more flitting around, no more pretending like this doesn't exist, no more saying and convincing yourself that you're unsure or you don't know. The reality is, is that you do know, you're just not, you're nervous. What's going to happen if I take that step? What's going to happen if I end this cycle of my life? What's gonna happen if I have to branch out, if I have to walk through, if I do pull the trigger? What's going to happen? It's all gonna come tumbling down. So yeah, it's like this word of I'm not ready. Yeah, you are, you really truly are. Everything in this life is has some level of risk to it. But if you control the demolition, if you control the breakdown, if you know what you want, if you know what you're trying to create, if you know who you are, or at least discovering it, the step that you take in order to branch out and to step out is going to help you to tap into that even further. But you have to be the one to take that first step. You have to be the one to bring it down. You have to be the one to you know, pull, pull the trigger, essentially, so to speak. The next cards that I pulled out for us and that I saw, which went really well, with the um, first few cards, the first two cards um, is the Six of Wands, the Ten of Cups, the Lovers, and the Magician. Now, it's very interesting to me because the metaphor that I'm going to use is something else that's gonna be a little, I don't wanna say, it's not inappropriate because I don't think that it's inappropriate, I think that it's a natural part of life, but I have to, it brings me from a spiritual from a spiritual perspective. I see masculine and feminine. I see negative and positive. I see dark and light, and night and day, and how those energies work together and how separate they are, but how much they need each other. And what I'm seeing with the lovers card is not just relationships, connections, intimacy, and things like of that nature. I'm seeing the blending together, the merging together, and the importance of that, of those separate energies merging, coming together to create the seed. And the thing is, is that with the Magician card, and so many of you guys need to hear this, is that there is a womb, right? And the womb is the void space. The Magician is the potency. The Magician is the masculine energy. The, the Magician is the, the assertion. You know, something being created, something with the potential to create, but it needs the womb to implant it, if you know what that if you know what I'm saying. So this is very masculine, this is very fire, this is very passionate, and that's something that I'm seeing within the chart. It's strong, it's masculine energy, it has a really strong presence, even if it's emotional or it is experiencing emotions, there's there's mask there's a masculine yang energy to it there's a masculinity um you know light to it that needs to plant the seed and within that seed has all of the dna literally within the magician card and if you're part of the sacred circle tarot school you hear me talking about this a lot is that the magician card has all of the different elements that you'll see throughout the entire tarot within the, the, the minor arcana because the magician is the start but something here, the seed wants to be planted, the seed wants to be embedded and has everything that it needs in order to create life. That's like DNA, all within this tiny seed that the magician carries. 
with that, it may seem like there's nothing. It may seem like it's insignificant because it's so small. It's like the seat of intention. But when you put it in the empty space, when you put it in the void, that's when those two forces come together within the lover's card and Gemini. The lover's card is actually ruled by Gemini and the moon is falling in the sign of Gemini. So when these en enter energies, they come together and they merge these, these opposites and they find each other, something gets created. And it's not that they are the same because in so many ways they are opposites, they're polar opposites. We have masculine, we have feminine, we have um, light, we have dark, we have white, we have black, we have negative, we have positive. But the polar opposites need each other and come together and this is all aspects all sides of you that finally mature finally it resonates finally you're intuitively inspired finally the 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 journey that you've come through this this half of the portion of your life now starts to make sense because now you're entering into the second portion of your life and it's going to be totally different let's say if the majority of your life um, up until this point, especially your childhood, has been very traumatic and you've been working relentlessly in order to heal it. Now you're entering into this new cycle because you've been in that void space. Something is being created here and has the potential to embed itself. And that's what it is that I'm seeing here. So you guys saying, well, I'm not sure, I'm not ready, I'm unprepared. No, you've been prepared. You have everything. It's written in your DNA. Your DNA, your legacy has been wired for success. Whether that success has been something that is already manifested in your generation or the generations that have come before you, it's still written in your DNA. And it has to find a way out. It has to create, it has to find um, a doorway, a portal to open up in order to manifest. And it's destined to manifest within your life, honestly. Now this success looks different for different people because we all have different life paths, we all have different purposes, and we all definitely have different astrological charts and natal charts. But this is something that you know, and again, it's undeniable. You feel it, you sense it, you can't avoid it anymore, you can't ignore it, you can't say, oh, you know, I didn't know. Yes, you did, you're lying to yourself, and now what's worse is that you're lying to the divine. It's a slap in the face to spirit, and that's something I don't, I don't like. So that's what it is I'm seeing for you guys. I know that that's truly a lot, but um, everything that is created here within that DNA that comes together, you know, those polar opposites that are, you know, destined, you know, by fate and karma and just hearing the call, the recognition, like hearing it, recognizing its voice, knowing that it's for you because North Node and Cancer has been saying this is where you belong. Some of you guys, you're like, this is too optimistic. You know what? That's very, I actually wrote that down. I wrote down, don't allow the optimism, optimism, your optimism that you're feeling, meaning that with the energy of Jupiter, and the energy of the Sagittarius full moon, some of you guys are like, okay, this is too good to be true, this is too optimistic, this is too positive, I have to be realistic. There's a time and a place for realism and practicality, and there's a place for it, but at the time of this full moon, you guys are already sensing something that is so big, so destined for you, and I want you to acknowledge it, to, to give it a chance. So I wrote down, don't allow the optimism you're feeling to trigger you and cause you to shut down. You're wired to receive an uplift now. And that's what you're, you're going to be experiencing at the time of the full moon. What you do with those ideas, right, is you have to take inspired action. Like, I, like it was that I was saying with Mars tr uh, trining Neptune. All of that, those things coming together, those things creating is going to create the Ten of Cups, is going to create the Six of Wands. It's always, it's going to be worth it. It's a part of your legacy. It's written in your DNA. It's in your genetics, success, security, abundance, love, support, recognition. Again, this is something that maybe your ancestors have not had the blessing to experience it, but your ancestors have struggled. They have fought in order to get you to where you are at today. And if they had to fight as hard as they did and take risks that maybe they felt that they weren't ready to do but they had to do it, you have to do the same thing for yourself because your legacy has to carry on. And all of those things, again, are written in your DNA. They come together in order to manifest or else it'd be all for nothing. All right, my loves. So the herbs that I'm seeing for us, interestingly, is cardamom, honeysuckle, 
which I have here. I am also seeing cayenne pepper and also red clover blossom. This is a red, red clover blossom that I have within my apothecary for the new moon bath soak, but I'm actually gonna be working with a similar blend um, that I'm not, I will not be sharing on the internet. But these are some herbs that I will definitely be working with to create the full moon and Sagittarius oil, the intention oil, which will be on my website that I'll be creating and setting intention over because I'm ready to get back to work, to roll my sleeves up, to manifest. Magician, lover's card, that's where we're at. Ten of cups, six of wands. We're you know manifesting again. We're setting intention. We're living our lives to the fullest. Um, Ten of Swords is the signal of the ending, this, the end of that cycle. Thank goodness, the breath of fresh air when that's finally over, when that's finally done. And I've been feeling that. And also the Page of Wands reversed. So it's like, you know what, that we're here, we're there, we're this, we're that. Now it's like, we are here. We are here. We know what we want. We know who we are. We are serious about it. And we are going to create. We're gonna create now. We're gonna create for our generation, the generations to come, and it's gonna keep on going. That's where we're at, that's where I'm at. So full moon's blessings to each and every single one of you. I know that that was a lot of message to receive, but you guys know that when I give it to you, I wanna give it to you good, and I wanna give it to you in full, that no detail is ever missed or overlooked, and I want to encourage you to set intention to connect with yourself the, the days before the full moon and the night of the full moon, or yeah, the day the days before, the day, bef the day of, and the night, bef so before you set the intention, the night of, um, of the full moon, so that you know exactly what it is that you want, because spirit really is opening up a door here when it comes to information, information and messages. I don't think, and I don't want to encourage you to wait for someone to tell you who you are, or wait for someone to tell you what you need to ask for. That's why I'm not gonna do it. Because it's something that you need to feel it. And when spirit tells you to think bigger than what you're thinking, I want you to be like, yo, I'm gonna do it. Faith, blind faith. If you say that my destiny is bigger than what I even thought and what I thought was the most large you know, vision that I could see from my life, then I'm gonna go with what you say, spirit. I'm gonna go with what you say, divine, because you know and you're telling me parts of myself that I haven't even discovered yet. And I need you to connect me also with the people, to merge me with the right people who will help me to be more inspired. And I wanna also be strong. I wanna also know who I am so that I can give to them in the same way that they will inspire and give to me. That way we can really merge and create something magical here. That's the type of partnership and that's the type of individualship, I just made that word up, that I'm seeing for all of us, okay? So thank you so much for watching. There are plenty more videos where this came from, so make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because I post videos weekly and at this point pretty much daily, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Hey guys, it's me again, Jess from Bahati Life. Really quickly, I just wanted to invite you to follow me on my Instagram at Bahati Life, or you can check out my personal Instagram, Jessica X Alexandria. For those of you guys that were concerned about browsing the apothecary, creating a custom oil, even booking a reading with me, you can do that at bahatilife.com. So I'll link all of those details down in the description box for you to make it easy. In the meantime though, I really do want to invite you to subscribe and to turn on notifications to the YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, so that you can be a part of my Bahati Vibe Tribe because I post weekly astrology and intuitive messages all the time. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.